recap of last session. Let's see here. Uh, Jonah, could you? <sighs> yeah, I can do that. Let's see. Here are the notes. Okay. Uh, I believe we started out running for our lives, being chased by the tellers. Mm hmm um we were in a skill challenge where we got very close to not making it out if i remember correctly um it ended with me uh, trying something and maybe working maybe not i'm not sure because i couldn't understand infernal so okay. the other the two other got two. to hear yeah some fun words that i didn't get um yeah, uh, then we continue. they left for some unknown reason that I, mm, I'm a little salty about it, but it's okay. Um, we continued walking, uh, made our way towards Clover. Um, Cupid talked to their patron a little bit, won't be getting any help there. Um, all of us were stressed and not really talking all that much on the way there for what a few weeks yeah a few weeks of just kind of constant paranoia yeah that was great everything was fine um and when we finally made it to clover we got a very um good look at a very beautiful city um Wonderful descriptions there. Thank you, Colin. No problem. Um, but yeah, we were looking at it, and it was massive and full of people, and we came to realize that you have to have money to go to Clover, because everything costs money, even walking down the roads. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, so, eventually we found our way in, and uh, got some directions to where we wanted to go. Spent the entire day walking there. Um, and when we finally got there, we started scoping out the building that was being talked about, the Abbey, uh, to see that there were armed mercenaries about. They were the Vultures, a uh, Brayon gang of smugglers. Or just Brian, Brio and mercenaries. Um, and they all had, like, magical weapons, at least the ones in the front. Mm -hmm. Which was interesting. Um, and while we were trying to figure out what to do, we had a uh, guest come up behind us. It was a copper-scaled dragonborn named, I think, Dara. Dara, yep, yep. I think yeah. that was their name. Cooper, was that their name? Not reasonably sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so he told us that he technically owned the building and was oddly um, helpful in us breaking and entering. Gave us a lot of information about what's going on, why he owns it. He actually lives in the Dark Ring, which is cool. Um, and told us about how to get in with the second floor window of the, uh, opposite building, which he also owns, specifically to sneak in when he wants to. Um, so, we went across to the opposite building, found the second story window, and made our way inside with great effort and stealth. That almost didn't work, but it's okay. Um... And upon getting into the little, like, balcony area, we spent, like, 45 real-time minutes Something figuring like out that. how to unlock a door uh, without being seen. And then we pulled it off flawlessly. <laughs> Pretty much. And it was great. I felt very proud of myself and us. Not that I, my character did much, but it's okay. 
Um, the character did a lot. So then, after sneaking past all the guards down, we went down a lot of stairs, about a hundred feet down, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Found more vultures uh, in this massive room with a giant gold door in the center. And there were murals of the rings seen from space on the ceiling. And they were, like, shifting, I think. Mm -hmm. Moving. Yeah, which was lovely. Um, we heard a woman and a man having a conversation. Lovely. I know who, or I think I do. But that's uh, other information. Um, they were talking about how... They couldn't figure out how to get in. They've tried everything from explosives to, like, magic. Um, asked what Asphyxia said about it, and basically learned that, uh, no, that's not going to work unless you want to level the city. Or at least some of it. Mm -hmm. It's a big city. Um, yeah. Um, some more fun information was found, and then... We heard a noise. And the woman was like, Nope, get out. It's here. Run away. Time to and go. The... And then she teleported. And the captain that she was talking to was like, Alright, y'all go upstairs. So most of the guards went upstairs. There's a few staying. And it f we, we got the bad feels. The bad vibes are back. Bad vibes are indeed back. So, as all of you now wait in your hiding spot, with an impending doom approaching, what are you guys doing? How many people are still in the room? Uh, let me give you a little bit of a visual aid, then, as... You're kind of hiding behind some pillars right now, so let's see. You'd be about right down there. Okay. I have an idea. All right. Okay. Never mind. There are more of them than I thought there were. They sent everyone up because the banker's here, right? That's what it seems like, yeah. Did they tell anyone what they look like? The banker? I, I feel like it will be a little obvious. Yeah, but he's not here yet. Who says I'm not the banker of bones? Um... I can't remember. Did she specifically say that it was the banker? No. Okay, she said it was something. Mm -hmm. Something's coming, you should kill yourself. And then she yeah. left. Yeah. Now, if I just walk slowly, menacingly, with a loud voice, twirling a knife or something, Can think you... I could convince one of them to leave? Or no, probably not. Maybe if you could look, make yourself look more monstrous, but I don't know how much they would buy it from a fairly average-looking person. Okay, well... I mean, for all they know, there's no way that we could have snuck down here, right? So, the only way for, for me to be here is if I killed everyone in the process. And then if I'm just kind of walking nonchalantly. That... Actually, that's not the most horrible idea. I could maybe... I could... It would be plausible to use, like, minor illusion to make him look covered in blood, wouldn't it? Or would that be not last long enough oh it lasts for a minute theoretically possible um 
minor illusions like you would need to focus on it to get it to like move like with him but you know with a roll it could be possible i mean you could always do the safer route and just do eerie shadows as i'm walking well yes but we if you want it to make it look like you killed people um it might be better for blood also Oh, true. true I, I think true. shadows would be a bit harder because lighting is a bit more ambiguous than blood. Or yeah, it, that, that's fair. It, that's fair. There would be more attention on it. Oh, you could idea make blood appear on ear edition, and as I'm walking out, I'll clean it off so that way you don't need to maintain um, like a difficult illusion as I'm walking. Hmm. So that way they're like, oh man, this thing is clearly bloody, and then I'll like wipe it so it's clean, and then you don't have to worry about maintaining the illusion. Maybe, but that is that enough blood? There were a lot of people up there. I right, mean... Just, just cover him and the knife in blood. You can still wipe it off if you want, but we need to hurry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. I will initiate phase one of the plan. Get covered I will, in blood. Uh... Oh. Okay, yeah, I guess if that's what we're doing, then I will, as he's walking out, I'll use Minor Illusion to try and oh. cover both well, him Well, I'm and... not walking out just yet. I'm using oh. Thaumaturgy to make my voice really loud, and I'm just going to start laughing. Okay. Uh, you kind of hear one of the uh, uh, vultures kind of starts look, looking around. Who goes there? Show yourself! And she kind of pulls out, like, a rapier and starts, like, lowering it out at kind of the darkness as the captain kind of uh, raises a hand. Steady. Steady now. Alright, blood me up. I'm gonna use minor illusion to cover him and erudition in blood as best I can. Okay. Then, as you're doing this, make an arcana check. It's not going to be necessarily that high of a check uh, due to the general atmosphere here. You're gonna need to be about an 11. You have a stress of 2. Okay. So, this is a stretch, but because it... No, actually, I don't think I could... I don't think it'd be related enough to the banker for me to get my advantage. Mm, probably not. You have 6 fate points if you <laughs> want to dump them. <laughs> yeah, you this, know what, this sure. This is the last... Yeah, I'll, I'll dump the fate points. Oh, okay. Then... <laughs> I'll say, if you want, you could dump two less and take a stress point. Uh, so you could add a little. I, you said I can dump two less and take a stress point? Yes. Um... Yeah, all right. I'll dump the four fate points and take a stress point then. Okay. Right. Then, this point, as you blood Grim up. Grim, what are you doing? I'm walking out slowly. All right. Uh, at this point, you can see like some of the vultures begin to run forward. Uh, make an intimidation check at advantage for me, because okay. Cupid is helping you with the blood. Uh, that is a 23. 23. At this point, like, all of the other vultures, their faces kind of go a bit pale. As the captain uh, lowers their blade at you. <laughs> Who are you? Is this really the welcoming party I get? And your army of men upstairs and... What, only five of you left? Shit! And closer. one of them, like, just cries out and jumps over the side of the chasm. <coughs> you can see the captain's, like, still, like, trying to steady the people as you're continuing to, like, come closer. Stop. You stop right there. I think I might take my time with you. When there's so many people, it's... 
It's hard to remember them individually, but... Please, please, sir. I have a family. I'll do whatever you want. Frankly, I couldn't care less. Now, would you rather you be recognizable or just a mangled mess? You can see... At this point, I'm going to roll for them because you're kind of activating the, the vulture's fight-or-flight response at this point. Damn, they all rolled high. All of them at this point kind of get the looks like, okay, we're all going to die. Fuck it. As they pull weapons and like are kind of like digging their feet in, the captain kind of steps up. Look. We can talk about this. So you... Okay. Joint by joint, then. Finger by finger. That's how this will be. And I'm going to twirl my, my little fancy ear edition. And see, like, the captain and all the others kind of look around as they're starting to inch forward around you like trying to like get in position alright um hold on how far is this guy from the chasm 20 feet mm -hmm. okay well then I probably can't do this I think at this point I'll kind of step out with Agape just kind of casually held to my side and Wait, I'll hold say on. this is a dark room right uh, yes. I'm simply going to point at, at this man. Right here. Hoping that something happens. <laughs> you will be first. Okay. And from the shadows, I will strike. This knife is really just for show. And I'm I'm just gonna 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 snap my fingers and hope that that something <laughs> fucking happens. Can I um, if I'm still behind the pillar, can I try and fire Dagape at the guy? Just kind of uh, obscuring where it's coming from, if possible. But guy erupting in flame. Sure. Uh, make an attack roll at advantage. Awesome. <laughs> All right, one second. Uh, I'm, uh, it's three stress points right now, right? Correct. Uh, not bad. Natural nineteen, so a twenty-one. Twenty-one will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. That sucks. I uh, too. All right, there's a loud crack as uh, the bullet kind of grazes the shoulder of this vulture as they kind of tumble back and then look around and like all of them are just going to like scream as they charge Grim. I'm going to need all of you to roll initiative Fuck. as battle has begun. Do we get Surprise, since they don't know we're here. That was your surprise round. Oh, okay. Well, at least one of them killed themselves. Yeah, Team. we got one of them. <laughs> oh. Uh, 14 okay. for me. 14 for Theron. Uh, 9 for Cupid. 9 for Cupid. And Grim, what was yours again? 13. 13. Gotcha. Uh, Vultures rolled a, a natural 20 for their initiative, and then the captain rolled a nat 1. So, you're getting bum-rushed, Grim. I'm cool with that. Okay. Uh, uh, Let's see here. So, they're attacking with their magical plus 1 weapons. So... That's going to be... Okay, here we go. Uh, first attack, 19. 
Second attack, 21. Third attack, 22. Yeah, that, that'll all hit. Yeah, as they are, oh, they're Lord. chopping in. I would like the hellish rebuke whoever the first one is that hits me. Uh, first one would be the one that was grazed by Cupid. Uh, well, let's... After you roll damage, I'll, I'll have him do his stuff. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, this is this is gonna be a, a little bit of damage here. I'm just gonna forewarn you. Okay. Um. Very nice. Twenty points of damage overall. Um. Oh, I'm grim. Fine. As at this point, you know, they run forward towards you and like in this moment um twirling their blades start to like rip into the body and you know it's definitely like just this onslaught that you can like barely even comprehend as their magical weapons try to get through your defenses but dexterity save for the first one ran up so they are going to roll a nine, a failure. They'll take 17 damage. Bah! As, like, they cry out as the flames just, like, ravage their body and just turn them to cinder. But that will be their turn. Uh, they're on. You're up. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time to move. Um, yeah, I'll get myself right up behind Grim. Um, and then, let's see. Bonus action. Uh... Citadel. So you will gain temporary hit points. Constitution multiplied by proficiency. Proficiency is two. Con is uh, three. So six uh, temporary hit points for Grim. Nice. Thank you. And then I will attack this one. Very nice. Uh, that is a 13 plus. Do you subtract stress from attack rolls? Yes. Okay. So 13 plus 5 is 18. That will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. I see. It's a D6. That is 5 plus. Seven, so. Twelve. Twelve? Then, as you run forward, you shove the spear through uh, this vulture's chest as they collapse to the ground, dead. And then... You also get a plus two to your AC, Grim. Oh, but you. that'll be my turn. All right. Just from being five feet. Then, Grim, you're up. Alright, well, first things first, I'm going to cast a Zephyr Strike so I can run the fuck away. Fair enough. And then, while I'm here, I'm gonna dab this guy with Erudition. Sounds good. Um, and you know what? I might as well use the, uh, advantage that Zephyr Strikes gives me mm -hmm. for the, the one attack on this one. Fair enough. So that will be a 21 to hit. 21 hits. Cool, and then so I would add the 1d8 for this attack. So that is a d4 plus 4 plus d8. It will take 10 damage. Alright then, as you... Uh... Uh, slash into this vulture she cries out stumbling back from this horrific chest wound but she is still barely standing like 
with this glowing, like, mace in her hands, but she's not looking great at all. Alright, well, see ya. <laughs> and then that will be my turn. Alright. Cupid, you're up. Alright, um... Question. Do I... Can I tell if I still have, like, my Blood Hunter uh, abilities? Even uh, though my gun is a bit wonky now? You've still got your Blood Hunter abilities, yeah. Cool. Alright, second question. Um, does the captain look, like, a lot tougher than the vultures? He carries himself with an air of professionality that these vultures do not have. Okay, can we... Is he an Aether soul? As you kind of reach out and attempt to discern, you do not sense that they are an Aether soul. Gotcha. In that case, I'm gonna... I'm gonna step kind of out from behind the pillar and... Yeah, I think bonus action uh, for my crimson right, I will shoot myself in the head. Okay. Roll that damage. Uh, three points of fire damage, although I, I forgot to specify before I am resistant to fire damage because of being a tiefling. Okay. Um, then in this moment, and I would have to recheck, but I don't believe like the, the actual blood hunter damage can be reduced. There, I, I think I am not the crimson right. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. This damage can't be reduced in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, as you shoot yourself in the head, you kind of wobble a bit as your body uses your own life force to curl these darker flames around the weapon. Um, but now you have, like, this new additional power within. Awesome. And then I am going to... I will take aim at the captain and fire. Okay. That is going to be a miss, I assume, with a six. A six, yes, as the captain kind of takes their blade out and almost, like, sees the flame coming and definitely just kind of using... The, this expert swordsmanship dodges out of the way of the strike. And in that moment, you also can see as they flick and twist their weapon, like this crackling, like, after image of lightning kind of trails behind their sword. That's scary. Okay. Um, see, that was... I believe that will be my turn. All right. It will be... Captain Laska's turn, as he'll look to the vulture and say, Cut them down! And as a bonus action, we'll use their command to uh, have the vulture take their reaction to move forward. And then they are going to dash forward and take three attacks into Theron. So, let's see here. <laughs> Why did you leave me? <laughs> it had, like... Oh, hell. I was scared. I told I... you I'd sell you out. Natural 20 for the first oh, one. Oops, sorry. Need to hit that. But it is a natural 20, you can see on the recording. Uh, 17 for the second. 17 misses. Okay. And 24. Two hit. Okay. Here we go, then. Let's see here how the fun times go. Two strikes. Very nice. It's going to be... Sorry, it's it's a lot of plugging in numbers. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you'll be uh, up after this. Hello? Oh. It's all lagging out. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. 
Okay. What the fuck? Sorry, everything just went crazy for me for a second, but let's see here. All right, as the captain is going to run up, yikes. They're on. You immediately feel the blade, like, cut past your defenses and run directly through, like, your upper shoulder as you cry out in pain as Captain Laska has, like, severed a bunch of tendons in there so you can't keep your shield up. With the second strike twirling around, you're barely able to deflect with your spear, but on the third, kind of whisking the blade around, drives it, like, into your midsection. And at this point, you've just lost too much blood as you fall to the ground unconscious. Okay. And that will be Laska's turn. For the remaining vulture, they are going to... Yeah, they're going to rush Grim. And they're going to attack with their weapon. So let's see how this goes. Natural one. As God. they run towards you and trip, like, at your feet. <laughs> uh, and as she does so, like, you can see, like, it's because she's got, like, this horrific wound on her chest. Still trying to fight, still trying to survive, but not enough. Uh, they're on. Make a death save for me okay 14 14 as you're drifting between the veil of life and death you feel like you're not alone and like you get these flashes of a creature moving and then a voice saying that's where you are and then, like, you just are hearing the sound of quickening, like, footsteps. Grim, you're up, though. Oh, oh okay. Um, well then. I, I don't want to have to do this, but I will. Can I use... Your addition to cast power word pain on the captain. Oh! Yeah, you could do that. Okay, I will do that. Alright, then, in this moment, as you kind of reach forward and activate the ability of your weapon, the power word pain erupts through Captain Laska. And as this occurs, he kind of, like, falls over to the side as he is just enraptured in just total pain and suffering. Oh, he's not dead? Power word pain doesn't kill. It just causes pain. Oh, yeah, never mind. My bad. Well, hey, he, he can't do anything for now. Um, or, wait, you can't do that because it's a fiend struck by this dagger. Oh, is it? A fiend struck by this dagger. I thought it was... Oh, a fiend struck by... Okay, no, 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 no. I, I saw it on my spells list, and for some reason I thought I could just cast it. In that case, um... Instead, I'm just gonna stab this guy. Okay. With, uh... Your addition again. 20 plus... 6. 16... Yeah, she's dead as you stab her in the throat and the life exits her body. Right, well, I'm almost dead, so I'm going to walk up here and I'm going to say, run while you have the chance, and I'll end my turn. All right, okay, you're telling that to the captain? Yep. Okay. Uh, Cupid, you're up. Can I, am I, is Grim saying this loud enough I can hear for that from over here? I'm assuming so. Does the captain look like he will run? 
the captain just rocked there on. He's not looking too concerned. Um, as, like, the three of you are all injured. And he is not. Okay. Follow-up question. Does he... Actually... No, I think instead I am going to... Uh, let me check distance real quick. I suppose I will hit him with bonus action, Blood Curse of the Marked. Okay. Um, and then I will take um, the damage to amplify it so I get advantage. Gotcha. Uh, one necrotic damage. Very nice. Okay. And then I will use my action to aim at him and fire. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 will hit. Six damage, I believe all of that is fire. Gotcha. Then as you fire off, getting through the captain's defenses, they take it kind of in the chest and kind of grimace in pain. I mean, it injured them, but you know, they're still looking pretty decent. Okay, I do want... I'm going to go ahead and, I suppose, move up this way, and that will be my turn. Okay. Then, on Laska's turn, they are going to attack into Grim. First attack. 18 to hit. Yeah. All right. Uh, just going to kind of do some the rolls kind of as they come as the uh, the first slash is going to arc down into Grim uh, let's see that is going to be oh shit they You're rolled track of my HP am I am I alive they rolled max on their damage like no lie um I collapse. Yeah. As they twist and spin, you feel their blade in your gut, Grim, and you go unconscious. And uh, then Laska's making their way to you, Cupid. Let's see here. Eleven. I want to say 11. Yeah, 11 misses. I have an AC of 14. All right, then 18 next. 18 will hit. All right, and let's see, that is going to do. Let's see here. Ooh. As they, they twist and spin in the air. Cupid, you feel the blade, like, run you through, like, the side as your body receives this crackling jolt of electricity. Um, and you just see the face of, like, a, a furious man who was terrified, who was ready to surrender if you gave them the chance. And then you murdered all of their companions and um, got really lucky with some rolls this point that is going to be laska's turn as you are like coughing up blood at this point cupid you feel terrible they're on it is your turn death save death save 19 19 would you like to take a doom point to have the result of this be equivalent to a 20. 
this would put your doom points at five. Fuck it. Yes. Okay. In this moment, then, as you are on the verge of life and death, you feel like the banker's essence, like trying to leech into you thereon. And in that moment, some of it finds purchase. You don't remember what happens next. All you remember is popping up with like these terrible wounds over your body near death, like sweating. There are tears in your eyes. Things are hazy. And then you remember, I I I'm in a fight. You have your turn. Okay. Temporary hit points don't get people back up, right? They do not. And he's not really looking all that weak. He's barely injured. Okay. 15 feet. 35. Um... Would I be able to make a check or some kind or something to try and, like, charge this guy and spear him into the pillar? That would be an athletics check to attempt to grapple him. Okay. I think I'll try and do that. Just a mad dash trying to get him. Okay. Okay off of Cupid. Sounds good. Athletics. You'll have to beat a 12. Okay, is a minus two. So unnatural 20 minus two, so 18. 18. Then as you run forward, See, you're able to get there before additional 20. Yeah, you're able to spear, like, kind of the captain back against the pillar, kind of holding him there with your grapple. Um, okay. If you want, as a bonus action, you can attempt to, like, take your spear and, like, drive it into a shoulder, like, in that action, to attempt to, like, pin him there. I would like to do that, yes. All right, make an attack roll against him then. That's another plus seven minus two is another unnatural 20. Another unnatural 20. Then at this point, like as he's moving, uh, because this is a bonus action, it's not going to necessarily do damage because like you're throwing the spear in. And it's basically like going through armor and like the cape that he has to like pin him to the wall there. But... At this point, he is pinned and unable to, like, move freely from that spot. Okay. Um, and then can I tell Cupid to get Grim up and go to the door? Sure. And that will be my turn. All right. Grim, make a death save. Ew. Two. Two. Same deal as was given to Theron, as you feel the banker of bones about. Do you want to take another point of doom? How many points of doom does everyone have? Theron has five, Cupid has four, you have three. I will not take a point of doom. I'm, I'm cool just chilling for now. Okay. Uh, then, Cupid, it is your turn. Got it. I'm going to run to, um, sorry, run to Grim, and I'm going to attempt to pick him up and get him as far as I can. Okay. Let's see, if you're getting him as far as you can, then you would not be very far. Be like That's there. That's fine. Get him start. Uh, unless you're trying to dash. Uh, actually. 
Yeah, I'll action dash. That would get us an additional 15 feet. Yes. Yep, an additional 15 feet we go. Okay. Let's see. Then on Laska's turn, he's going to like kind of cry out in a little bit of like discomfort, and he is going to attempt to attack at you there on at disadvantage uh, because he's pinned there. But at this point, he's just trying to you know get you down. Uh, ten for the first attack. Fourteen for the second. And, uh, last one, they're on. So he's pinned there trying to stab at you. Fifteen. Or do, does any of that hit you? No. You lucky motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, do you think that mathematically he'd at least get one? I'm stressed. <laughs> As the, the blade keeps on, like, flicking out at you, uh, you're barely able to, like, move as that cut on your shoulder is still kind of preventing more of your defensive measures from your shield. It's all, like, instinct as you move, as, like, the lightning blade almost comes and pierces your heart at a few points, but somehow you're bobbing and weaving through it all thereon, and it is your turn. Okay. Um, I have another... Sp He's still pinned, right? Mm-hmm. I have another spear. Would I be able to fully pin him to the thing if I used that? That would be an action. Uh, the, would... the, the full pin is... It wouldn't do anything ne like necessarily mechanically different. As he, he has would... been, you would be doing damage to him. Okay. I'm trying to figure out a way to like make him stay there longer if I try and go. <laughs> uh, if you pin two spears into him, then it, he would probably have to make two checks, two athletics checks to like pull the, the spears out. Um, but you would, that would be your action to like do the, the full pin. 50 feet. If I am helping Cupid, can I, can we get full movement? Uh, yeah. Like helping him carry him? Can mm -hmm. we get full movement to the thing? I'd say so. So if I successfully do this, we could get there in two rounds. Theoretically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try and pin him. Okay. With my other spear. Um, so that's, um, cool. Then make an attack roll. Then add advantage. Oh, advantage, yes. That is another 15. I am rolling all the 15s tonight, so that's another unnatural 20. Okay. Uh, then go ahead and roll damage as this time you like are driving it towards the chest and Laska moves at kind of the last moment so that you catch one of the forearms instead and pin that to like the pillar. Uh, that is six plus three, so nine. Nine, very nice. No. Five, so twelve. No, eleven. Sorry. What's the I number? I forgot to add it. It's twelve or eleven. <laughs> Good lord, eleven, eleven, eleven. Okay. I then... Got the additional two I get from my ability. Gotcha. And you stab kind of that one arm in as the other one still kind of clutches the sword. And right before I go to run to the others i will like look at him as sincerely as i can and say follow the lady's advice what's about to come is not something you want to be around for fuck you murderer okay i did my best and then i'm running over here you lucky son of a gun <laughs> oh he's got warden oh no, oh, no, he doesn't. No, he just has the opportunity he, attack. Yeah. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Luckily, mm -hmm. it's a natural one as the blade flicks out 
towards you. He, like, lunges as far as he can, like, the tip of the sword, like, touching your back for a moment, and then he keeps trying to overextend, and the sword falls out of his hand. Okay. And I'm helping Cupid carry Grim. And okay. I, we're just going to make a mad dash to the door. Gotcha. At this point, then, if you are just dashing towards the door, then you complete that mad dash and see kind of like this open slot within the door that seems to potentially fit your addition. We will slide it in. Okay. Then as you kind of take your addition from Grim's hand, you slide it in as the door <laughs> begins to like slowly open up like these faint trails of light seeping through. Are the two of you carrying Grim ducking inside? Yep. Yeah, slipping in as soon as there is a gap big enough. Okay. In that case, as you go and slip inside, you immediately kind of fall in between the, the doorway. And as you do, you are faced with this massive library in front of you. You see that it is a, a multi-floored structure um, with this winding staircase kind of going up and down to these different floors. However, uh, Cupid, due to your general nature of looking and for and hunting creatures of the dark, you would notice the skeletons that lie about this library, and also some of the marks of like battle and ransacking that are here. And you notice that the skeletons, while vaguely humanoid, are not human. They're not elf, at least not anymore. There are mind flayer skeletons littering the inside of the library of Persepins. Additionally, gotcha. kind of um, about 50 feet uh, into the actual atrium of the library. You can see this massive book laid out on this kind of open podium. The book is maybe like two or three feet thick and closed with kind of this gold embroidering text on the front that just says index. Right. Um, the door, is, is it still open behind us or did it like shut itself behind us uh it's beginning to open do you want to close it behind you i would like to close it behind us and if it seems like i can relock it i would very much like to do that as the door closes it automatically locks behind you thank god okay um are you guys helping grim awake yep yeah i'm just gonna quickly say those are mind player skeletons over there, just so you know. That's weird. And then I'm trying to tend to Grim. Okay. <laughs> just brush over that fact. Uh, do you hey, by the way, there's some Eldritch monstrosities. So anyway. Uh, do any of you have any healing items? Uh... Uh... Or any means of healing? I do not... Can I search Grim just carefully and see if he has anything on him. Grim, you got any healing items on you? Nope. Great. Alright, then, Cooper, uh, begin making death saves for me at advantage. You got two people helping to attempt to stabilize you. That's one success. Okay. You're one and one. Two success. Two and one. Another failure. <sighs> and Colin, I am not taking a point of doom. I have succeeded. You're a ballsy motherfucker, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that... I have a theory on what doom does. Okay. And I need to maintain what I'm at. Gotcha. Then, as... You two try and help Grim. He's perilously losing blood. 
And as kind of the minutes tick by, you think, oh shit, we might lose him. And then, Grim, you pull out of it as being an Aether Soul, your like overactive healing kicks in, and your eyes flutter open. Thank fuck. I thought you were dead. Thing, everything work out? We, we good? Well, we're in the library. They're mind player skeletons. Um, that's all we got so far. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Here, I'm... Um, uh, wounds myself. So that is a... D8 plus 5. I will heal myself 8 HP. Very nice. And then I'll do it again. <laughs> okay. I'll heal Just myself using... another 8 HP. And I am now out of spell slots. <laughs> Lovely. Bruh. Hey man, y'all don't need healing. Uh, we do. We I very much do. Uh, uh, I feel great. What about you guys? Theron is barely standing. Cupid is basically at the same level as Theron. Ooh. <sighs> Sorry guys, I, I I didn't notice. Flipping the bird. I'm gonna pat him on the back and start exploring the library. Okay. You said big book said index, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> go look at index. Oh, true. As you kind of go and you flip it open, it essentially uh, labels all the places here in the library where certain sections are kept, um, archiving like, different information, when it was slotted into the library. And as you keep on flipping, um, even as thick as the book is, the what essentially this book is, is um, it has a little pocket dimension in it. So while this book is already, like, two feet thick, it's the equivalent of, like, a ten-foot thick book, where, like, you just keep on flipping and more and more pages appear, as, like, the previous pages just kind of, like, disappear into the front of the book. But essentially you can find anything and everything like where the information is kept within this library from this spot. Cool. Can we look for anything pertaining to the Scroll of Morophis? Sure. Uh, as you look through kind of trying to figure out things about the Scroll of Morophis, you find that that is located in the restricted section um, on the third uh, floor of the library. And if as you are uh, looking through, um, you know, it is in like a, a very small kind of niche corner um, that is like this heavily archived and protected uh, information. But it's there if you want to go and try and track it down. Let's do it. Can we also look for, like, Banker of Bones? Uh, sure. As you go and look for that, uh, you're able to find, as you begin looking through the book thereon, that entries on the Banker of Bones are kept on the second floor on um, anomalous entities and heretics. There's, like, a section for that. Is there any other information that you're trying to track down, or is that the two places you're heading to first? Uh, question. Do we see anything implying if the restricted zone is, like, just a title, or if it has, like, extra protections we'll have to get through? Um, looking at, like, the, the index as you go through, the restricted section is meant for consoles, um, and people of the, the old, like, Clovian Senate who have served for more than three terms who have been given, like, right of information by Zell. Right as in R-I-T-E. Um, like, so, like, this 
like actual like magical ritual. It is like very sensitive information, and there are a few sections like that um, that require it, like throughout the the library in general. Um, it doesn't make reference to any defenses, but you would gain like a strong understanding of like there are probably some things in there to protect against individuals who gained access to the library of, of Persepence and like you know try to overstep their bounds but who knows it's an old library hmm. do we want there is something that I want to look up but I don't know what it would be under can you tell us what it is? Can can you look for a uh, non-natural rust? Oh. I don't know where that would be. I'm not an avid reader. I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I know how to read, right? But I I didn't think you didn't. Um. Well, I, yeah. I just. You know how people are. I, I just want to make sure you knew. Uh -huh. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um. What about? <laughs> Can I try and look for anomalous aging? Something that would encompass both, maybe like, individuals not aging, and also kind of fall under like things in the world around you seeming to age weirdly like weird things rusting um that's really broad um uh, like if you're looking for that is more going to be under like time which is a, a very broad thing so you can look at just like weird like fluctuations in time or you could try to go for like the more rust route like it's it's like a very micro topic versus like a macro topic like it's the it's the difference between being like, all right, I'm going to study Germany and I'm going to study like this one community in the city of Frankfurt between the years 1980 and 1984. Like it's it's wildly more vast. Uh, rust it is. OK. Um, then as you start getting to like go through and look a uh, fate point to you, Cooper, because surprisingly enough there are sections on things like this of like decay and entropy and like the the overall like degradation of like these certain sources um whether it be like the strange rust that comes from metals like zostrium and other metals found beyond the rings of Merapis. that's something that i don't think uh you know cooper there are metals that are not native to the rings and contain uh different properties and zostrium being one of those metals that can rust under very strange circumstances usually it only rusts under the light of a full moon or um if it is like put under like in an tense amount of cold it will actually develop a strange rust on it not even like water or ice just like cold in general um there are also like stated cases of like rusting that come from like titan incursions like some like aether eaters or um like it records of titans in general if you were to like go and look into that kind of um like lead to to the rusting of things specifically as you look like metals stripped of their aether will almost immediately oxidize rust and then turn to nothing is there anything deeper that you're trying to press for I have... Okay. Can I read more on Aether Eaters? 
Not necessarily because I think it'll help us right now, but because just I'm curious. Yeah. Um, we can get to that. Each of you will be able to ask like a some more questions at the end. But at this point, um, are there any other topics that you kind of want to get through before uh, heading off onto different things? Anything that you want, Caleb or? Or Jonah. Can I just for fun look up the right of information? Sure. Um, the what you gain is like the the right of information is essentially a a sacred ritual that can be placed upon individuals that essentially help to safeguard their mind against certain information. Uh, the right of information has been used from, like, wizards at a lower level to... There are even speculations that some high gods might occasionally place the right of information on individuals. But uh, theories and speculations on that say that it usually drives an individual completely mad. Or, like, com like changes them fundamentally as a person. Like, there is a report that potentially, at some point... Um, like the the high god of like the creative like placed the right of information on one of their clerics, and they were like a a very like chill like comedic writer at the time, and after they got the right of information, they turned a little bloodthirsty, a little bit more mad. Like there was a, a visible shift that was reported by friends and families, and like a, a biographer actually tried to like write down everything that they could about this cleric as you know they were supposedly touched by a high god uh and the result was like the the writings taking on a more um kind of like barbaric feel they s switch from poetry to basically the equivalent of like like gory slaughter porn Gotcha. I think that is it for my questions. There on anything else from you? Um. Or do you want to give um, Grim some more time to look up Aether Eater stuff? I think we can do that. Okay. What information do you want to know about the Aether Eaters, Grim? Okay, well, that's a good question. Because I don't know a lot to begin with. Well, um, fair enough. Could I go for what makes an Aether Eater? Or, like, what does the consumption of Aether... Like, well, what does that really mean? Sure. Because it's kind of like an obscure thing at the moment. Um, the creation of Aether Eaters is extremely vague as well. The, the thought is that the Titan King Zix and his wife Zolana, the, the Sky Queen, um, sometimes called the Sky Harbinger as well due to the intense storms that she brought down upon her enemies in the the wars um like had five children although some sources in this library dispute if they were actually like their like biological offspring or if they were actually created it's unclear but they are called like their children uh, and they gain the ability to literally destroy aether now what exactly aether even is is also up for a lot of discussion and debate um but many consider it like the lifeblood of the rings of Merapis. And the Aether Eaters can literally like take this fundamental energy out of the world and destroy it. Like it is gone. Like imagine if you were a person and you had the Aether stripped from you like completely. Aether souls have more Aether than most, but like everyone still has a tiny bit of Aether in them. That is pretty universally agreed upon. And so, if your Aether was stripped, 
there would be no afterlife for you. It would be like before you were born. Darkness. You're gone. Your existence wiped. Your physical form broken up. The very bonds that just keep your atoms together just breaking down. Like uranium breaks down. Like just radiologically decaying into nothing. Well, that's... haunting. Well, anyone else want to look stuff up? I think I'm good. Um, do we... I assume we're going to go find the sections on our friend outside and on the scroll. Do we? Which are we doing first, and are we doing that together? Oh, oh. hold on. I have another thing I want to look up. Oh, uh, no. My character wouldn't know it. Never mind. I, I have something I would like to look up. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, can I look for the location of powerful, like, weapons, items, things like that? Sure. Um, well, let me pull up a, a document, and because you know there are there are lots of powerful weapons, items, things like that. Um, let's see. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to be looking for? Or are you just trying uh, to like find like the first legendary item that like crosses your path? First one that crosses the path, but like the closest one to uh, where we are now. Like just limiting the search to Zell. It's not really like when you're entries on these items aren't when you have them there like you during this process you okay. have to go and like look for books and entries to figure out where they are so there's mm -hmm. not you can't like just filter for like items closest to me okay then first one okay it um, appears to be a weapon gotcha let me Oops. see here um one two three five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, roll a d12 for me. Okay. 3. 3. Hmm. Very fun. Okay. So, as you're kind of looking through, you find an entry on a weapon called the Star Eater. Uh, this was a flail created by Ateus, the material god of Laurel, uh, before it was lost in Zell's conquest of the city. The flail, like, had the ability to gain power from the suffering caused, like, around it, so it would, like, eat, like, that power. Um, and, like, basically, like, the more carnage that was about the Star Eater, like, it just kind of, like, pulled in that energy. Um, so essentially, like, the longer the wielder of the Star Eater fought, the more powerful the Star Eater would become. And it was thought that a soldier wielding the Star Eater on a battlefield could single-handedly win the day if they survived long enough for the Star Eater to reach, like, full strength. There are conflicting reports on where the Star Eater might be. Some reports say that... Uh, it was lost because it was stolen by the Republic of Senexel, and it's, whole, it's held deep within their vaults in the region of Trajana Minor there. And there are other reports stating that it might be located um, in a, a different dimension. Specifically, this dimension's name is the Arena. It's located at position negative 9 on the Cosmic Stack, and is a dimension filled with warriors who fight from sunup to sundown that are driven 
like to the point of madness by the sun like when it touches them and it's just they're being used by the strongest warrior who just basically keeps on fighting with it until they are killed and it gets passed off to the next person but it's thought like hey if you can like survive with this thing for a long time it will build up to truly astronomical levels of strength and it nearly was enough for Ateus and Laurel to like basically push the nation of Zell back which at its height a pretty impressive feat okay have two things that I want to look up. Okay. Um, the first is less pressing, so I'll do that one. Um, could I try and figure out um, just what type of people would have access to Titanus powers? Ooh. Um, kind of looking through, you're not really finding, like, any, like, common denominator other than like they reached out to the titans or the titans reached out to them and they accepted it's the same kind of thing with like you know who who can become a cleric anyone can become a cleric you just kind of have to devote yourself who can become a warlock well if you sign the pact you can become a warlock interesting Well, then the second thing that I want to look up is how to dispel arcane traps. How to... Such as those that would be protecting the library. Okay. Um, as you kind of look through, traps are, are difficult things. Um, you know, if the process of dispelling them is kind of different for each trap it's just kind of like how it's designed it essentially requires like reverse engineering like the overall principles used to like create a lock so like if you were trying to trap a door like your magic might be like okay i am going to magnetize the bottom of the door and like the top of the ground so it's basically like an electromagnetic seal um with like incredible amounts of strength holding it like together now that would technically be a very weak arcane lock as like you could just be like oh i'll just turn off the magnetism duh but you can make it more complex and so it's all about like having to like unwind it or particularly powerful entities can just be like punching through the the general magic and trying to eradicate everything there but that's a much much more difficult thing to do and if the arcane seals are connected to like a power source like for instance let's just say like you had in like a gem which contained like aether or mana or like some type of power source for the the traps to feed off of then it would be exponentially more difficult as wherever like you were trying to punch through the trap it would just be like refortified. Well, in that case, I have an idea. I'm going to look for the restricted area that would have the scroll. Okay, so Grimm's heading off. Are you guys heading with him? Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, did you two want to look up anything else before you go? Uh... You'll probably have time to return, so... Yeah, no, I'm good for now. Okay, I'm good for now. Um, in that case, you can make your way towards the restricted section on the third floor of this library. As you do, you see signs of kind of more destruction, more dead mind flares, um, bookshelves turned over at a greater rate. And as you kind of turn down a hall, you can see a a passage that is filled with skeletons, bodies, bones, um, of all these different mind flayers. 
but also you can see some individuals in like this platinum plate armor um, with like these um, double-sided like glaives basically like a, a glaive blade on each side of like a seven to eight foot long like pole um, there are probably like four or five of these individuals each with half a dozen mind flayer bodies surrounding their broken forms at the end of the doorway there is a, a broken down kind of what appears to be steel door with uh, runes on the outside that have long gone dark and what appears to be like an interior full of books some of which are lying on the floor um, and like a pile of dead mind flayer bones at the front of the doorway itself so is it safe to say that I know where uh like, like, can I see through the doorway, or...? Yeah, you can see through the doorway. Can I toss a random book near me through the doorway? Sure. You just grab a priceless tome and... Yuck! Throw it <laughs> through the door. It flutters through as kind of the, the spine of the book tears in midair, fluttering out on the interior um, as it kind of like hits the ground with a thump though you can see like one rune on the door like tries to flicker to life and then like dies with a spark it's inactive but to clarify the Walk spine tearing the was okay <laughs> the spine tearing just seemed like the book being like super fucking old right yeah it was just a really fucking old book okay then i will fo follow grim okay yeah um as you walk through the door, Grim, um, kind of the runes try to like sparkle, but it's nothing. Uh, the most you feel is a little bit of like lightheadedness that soon passes. Um, you would know, though, Cupid, if this door had been like at full, like this particular enchantment swells the brain, like in the actual brain cavity, and like would kill you from the inside. Like it is a hey. very powerful like enchantment that basically has gotten worn out and so like in the heyday of zell someone would attempt to open the door their brain would swell basically and they just keel over dead before anything else happened like cupid looks immensely distressed as they figure this out but they are not not vocalizing that but that's inside information fair enough as you enter in, then you can see, you know, probably uh, four-fifths of the interior of this space are intact. The few books and things on the floor, it looks like um, the Mind Flayers who came and tried to sack this place, you know. If they tried to get inside or do anything, they didn't make it very far before other wards and enchantments had fired off and, you know, dead. But are you trying to find the section that you know contains information on the scroll of Marapis? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It is found in one small journal um, done like and created by a cleric of Zell um, hundreds of years ago at this point. And as it's kind of flicked open, uh, you can see like it is like a copy of a copy of a copy of things that they have heard, but it's still like the most information that people have about the Scroll of Marapis in actual centuries. Um, and for it being placed in this library, it does probably have some merit to it. Uh, it begins with kind of a short foreword about what the Scroll of Marapis is, uh, as they've been trying to like track down the scroll. And it is essentially grim a series of codes that if spoken or if like done the right way with certain like magic spells can control the flow of magic around the rings of marapis like completely control how magic 
works, how the rings operate even, like the direction they spin, where mountains are, where the seas are. Like it's basically allows for the complete reconfiguration of the rings at a depth that even the author can't even fathom. Now, kind of going through it then says that um, Carowin ordered that the scroll was moved around the cosmic stack often, uh, never staying in one place for long. Um, and he said this before he left the Prime Ring. Um, and, like, going through, it's basically like a, this long-winded tale of, like, where the author went, where he tried to get the information, tracking down, like, lost like through lines here and there but the last known location of the scroll was in the tower of whispers in the dimension of brumel on layer negative 22 of the cosmic stack it's not even here layer negative 22 came all this way and it's not even here What's the name of the dimension again? Brumel. 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 Okay. <laughs> and let's see, um... Cupid, you can make a an arcana or a history check for me. Your choice. I my modifiers are both the same. I will go with uh let's let's do history. Um do I I don't suppose I would get my advantage from um hunter's bane on it would i no okay just making sure actually yeah you would thank god because that <laughs> was a seven that's worse <laughs> no it's still seven you've never heard of the dimension of brumel Very fair. I suppose when we go back to the index, we can look it up. I don't know what else to look for. I don't suppose either of you have a way to travel through the cosmic stack? Not even close. It's a layer negative 22, right? Negative 22, yes. Right, okay, I, I guess we... Maybe we... Look at the section we found on... Uh, the... Our, our friend outside. Uh, figure out if there's anything we can do there, and then we go back to the index and see what we can find on... On Brumel, on that dimension. Okay. So are you heading to look up the banker then? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and as you head out of the restricted section, you walk down the floor and head to um, another section of the library that seems to actually have been fairly combed over. As you go, there are 
many, many books missing here. And as you go through the actual section where information on the baker should be, there are only like two or three books there remaining um, that contain information like what you seek. However, they are ancient and contain, again, lots of information. Um, this is what you would find if you were taking the time to read and and look and try and understand. The Banker of Bones originally was named Nicholas Black. And judging by uh, this report, at some point, a material god uh, who has long since died um, tried to look into the Banker of Bones as they had been ravaging their lands. They found that the Banker, after having been scorned by the high god known as the Shadow for entering the galactic core without their permission, uh, was thrown onto the Dark Ring in exile. There, Nicholas Black, um, a strange pilgrim in a land that he did not understand, walked. But other hands were involved with Nicholas Black, the text says. He found a piece of Neorax, the Baron of Destruction, and the greatest general of the Titan armies. Neorax had been severed into three pieces after the gods and titans warred. The head was thrown um, like onto the prime ring, the torso onto the dark ring, and the legs and the sword of Neorax onto the primordial ring. The banker found part of the torso. Nicholas Black, not knowing what else to do, starving in the middle of the desert, far beyond the Sea of Screams in a territory controlled by the Nyx, ate of the meat and was transformed into something that was much closer to a titan. The banker, the reports here think, hunts for a way to release Neorax, but even that seems shallow. The banker's objectives have thus eluded comprehension and are really unknown. His powers are unknown, really. His limitations seemingly unknown. Although the, the final thing that one of the authors writes, um, having to take over as the Banker of Bones originally kidnapped and murdered the material god that had been trying to study them, um, says that the Banker of Bones likely builds effigies to honor the Titans, particularly to honor Neorax, uh, the Baron of Destruction, Zolana, the Sky Queen, and Zix, the Titan King. doesn't seem like we're taking care of him anytime soon. Probably not. Um, can we go back and look for something? Sure. Can we see if we can find information on exactly where the pieces of Neorax are? Um, yeah, you could certainly try, as you, know, you would go and attempt to look for that information. Um, it's even here, it's not exact, um, as it they were, of course, like, vastly scattered in their mm -hmm. disbursement and with time you know even then like that information had mostly been lost um there there are hints though that uh, parts of neorax 
are you know in the area uh, controlled by the Signornia of the Nyx, um, and you know the the Nyx supposedly keep pieces of it under close watch. All pieces on the Prime Ring have been lost, and it is thought that potentially pieces of Neorax fell uh, near the ruins of Ghislaine, uh, which is like this ancient city on the Primordial Ring, that when you're looking through this uh, at that point there on, uh, the closest known city to the ruins of Ghislaine is a small town called Lords on the Primordial Ring. Holland? Hi, Caleb. Hi. I hate you. Oh. <laughs> hate and love are very close to each other. I'm assuming this is relevant. Extremely. Well, good luck um, not knowing or not being able to do anything with that information. <laughs> I think it compounds on information I have already been sitting on for a month and a half and have not been able to use. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm... <sighs> okay. Um... What, you don't want to know about the vastly spread out pieces of Neorax? No, I do. I also do. Yeah, that seems like some useful information to have, but... You know. Ah, uh, yes, a bunch of dead men are... <laughs> learning all this useful information. <laughs> We're not dead yet. <laughs> We're gonna be. I'm sure we can find something in here. Oh, I I'm sure we'll find stuff in here, but it's getting out that's the problem. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, Banker 8 Titan became kind of like Titan. Very, very dangerous. Not much is known. Can we find information on... I don't want to say weaknesses, but, like, things that have proven effective against Titans. Sure. Um, make... All of you make investigation checks, and tell me how much time you would be willing to devote to this type of information. Like, to trying to find, like, what is effective versus Titans. Well, that depends on how, how well I... Oh. Uh. 16. Okay. How long are you guys trying to devote? I got a nat one. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> but I, I'm to... willing... Hmm? Okay. I'll devote a lot of time to it. I'm willing to spend, like, hours at it. Are you willing to take a point of doom to reroll that? Sure. Sure, I'm dead anyway. There Better, was... 16. Okay. Two 16s. Grim, uh, what about you? How much time um, are you devoting? I'll look for it for like 20 minutes. Okay. And then I'll be like, ah, better use of my time. Gotcha. And I'm going to look at immortality. Okay. With, with the remaining of the uh, time that we have. Gotcha. I mean, you got all the time in the world, buddy. But we'll... Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. You're, say, you're asking me how much time we're spending. That doesn't imply that we've got that much time. <laughs> I'm just asking what is the upper limit. Um, So... At this point, as it is mainly Grim or uh, Theron and Cupid who are looking, can you please rephrase what it is exactly that you are looking for? I'm looking for ways to slow down or severely injure a titan type creature <laughs> okay um as you kind of you go through 
there you get a few hits with a 16 uh, as both of you spend a, you know about a day and a half looking straight like just looking for information about this because it's it's very rare a lot of the books have been you know torn out and are just all over the place i mean you literally just get to the point where you're like picking up random books off the ground and skimming them trying to find anything there are a few hits um some metals um that hail from outside of the rings of Merapis seem to be ex like effective in general for fighting against titans um one Ganassi scholar has written down that uh, the metal Zostrium seems to have um, a bit of use against titans and beings that have like titanous energy to them. Um, of course, like actual titans are a whole different matter entirely. There is um, another type of metal that is apparently very rare um only a few ounces of it have ever been found on the actual rings of Merapis. um this metal is called oculum and it apparently has properties that can stifle um tightness magic but again like it is so so rare and the final bit comes actually from um writings of Zell, um, and, uh, as, or, because, remember, Zell used to be, um, a saint of, like, the, the Clovian Republic before he actually, like, went off and founded the, the nation of Zell, and from Zell's own writings, he seems to actually be fairly intelligent, and almost writes more like a sciency nerd than anything, and talks about how he thinks he might have found a new element or a new specific metal, but he's trying to understand what exactly it is, because he doesn't know. Um, after trying to, like, figure out uh, the name, um, he kind of sat back and he, he listened just and he, it's weird as he's describing it it's like he's trying to listen to a fucking song but like he's describing things in this really weird way that's hard to follow and he notes that he thinks that this theoretical metal's name is Adalaris, but he's he could Bruh. never prove what it actually was um Are you shitting me right now am i shitting you uh hold hold on to your butts bucko as <laughs> um theoretically there are the titans also seem to have an, a hatred of aether so there is that and there are thoughts that like because the titans warp reality like that they're in and they're like two competing sets of divinity that aether itself may or may not be poisonous to them but the existence of Aether Eaters might draw that into question, so they're, they're not really sure. Um, Cupid, as you're looking through, there are, like, musings in the past where people talk about how there might be a power that the Titans fear. Um... But it's, it's very obscure, and you don't find basically anything about it. It's called the Prime Accord. And as you look at it, the, the Titans seem to... Um, Zix, Zolana, and Neorax in particular believe that the Prime Accord could be their end. But, like, it's, it's so vague um, that no one really understands it. And the most that you can glean from it, Cupid, is it's some sort of contract. Mm. Bro, the thing that I wanted to look up, but my character wouldn't know, was the Prime Accord. <laughs> so that, that that's convenient. Prime Accord is some very rare information. Um, so I, I, do I find anything interesting about immortality? 
Uh, Potentially something related to Titanus powers. <laughs> related to Titanus powers. Um, as you're looking for roots of immortality, I mean, there are a lot of potential ways to gain immortality. Um, about as many ways as stars in the sky. I mean, elves can live for an extremely long time. Um, there are, of course, uh, ways and versions to achieve, like, lichdom. Um, but none are listed in this library as each lich kind of goes about it in their own way of trying to achieve this lichdom. Um, usually by the actual, like, processing of, like, other people's lives and creating a, a phylactery or, like, basically a philosopher's stone from which they can draw their power from. Um, of course, there are titans and um, that seem to be immortal. Um, material gods and their saints seem to have immortality that could be bestowed through Aether. Um, the metallic dragons are also considered, for lack of a better word, immortal. As they can die, but they're always going to be reborn. Um... And, like, there, there are many other creatures like phoenixes that are thought to also be immortal. So, lots of different avenues for immortality there. Um, and it's thought that each, like, branch of magic, each of uh, the three main types, like, has an avenue for immortality. Would I read more on this uh, metallic dragon thing? What do you want to know? anything my brother in christ there's a lot <laughs> yeah. i i i you're talk i have like okay. pages on them <laughs> okay could i look for um people who would worship metallic dragons oh yeah um you would find that there is a, a lot of worship of metallic dragons um theoretically the metallic dragons don't like gods uh specifically material gods they don't believe in them they hate the term of them being called gods they respect the high gods but the dragons kind of operate on their own like and don't try and like fuck around with too much now there are have been stories of like dragons um, particularly some of the more powerful ones, um, like Koron, the gold dragon, also known as the Lord of the Firmament, or um, Aurelian, um, the Lord of Stars, the, uh, the silver dragon, kind of going out and trying to collect followers. Um, and, you know, many other dragons like um, the bronze dragon, um, let's see, uh, Nagavir, also. Like, there, there are many that kind of go out and try and like collect followers but mainly they they each have their own interest or purpose like koron wants the betterment of their followers to like specifically uh, from writings here koron tries to raise up people and like turn like basically turn coal into diamonds and take the absolute worst people and turn them into the best people and each of the kind of metallic dragons has their own thing going with that. I will say, I, I do have my backstory pulled up because I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll let somebody else research something for now. I don't want to hog up all the time. And okay. Then, uh, I've got another thing. Um. Oh. Hmm. Can I look into the tattoo on our backs? Sure. As you look into that, um, the, the 
tattoo. It is, of course, the symbol of the Banker of Bones, but of course it's more than that. The tattoo itself is made up of many parts, and as you kind of start to go through those parts, it shows like an, an alchemical you know, property to it with the the delta of change there and that general symbol uh it's inversion in the alchemical language meaning a a degradation uh, of change uh also um with some of the symbols within denoting um a change of blood a change kind of deeper than that but blood on the rings of Merapis means something. Blood is family. Blood is past. It's history contained within each living individual. The blood and its change that the banker, you know, kind of takes is changing the individual on such a fundamental level. They are completely different. It is a, a symbol of most power that the banker can like when he places that symbol on it denotes a complete change a fundamental change a transfusion of everything that makes a person them into something else or perhaps a return to the past as well it could have a lot of different meanings, but it does have alchemical and arcane significance. Does Great. Anyone have, oh, does anyone no, go have ahead. anything that they want to research, or can I can I ask one more question? Uh, you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, can I uh, look for anything that might be hunting or attempting to, like any enemies of um, the metallic dragons? Oh, yeah. Um, there are a ton of enemies of the metallic dragons. The metallic dragons, um, here I can, I'll pull up the, the map of Ramesh. They actually, based on data information, used to live in the area which is now known as Trajana Major. That is where they were originally settled, but they were really across, like, uh, Ramesh in general, um, the dragons were. However, the metallic dragons were driven out as people feared them and their power. And eventually, like, they were pushed all the way out uh, and up into a set of islands to the far north of Ramesh in the Draconic Kingdom. Um, and this general event is, like, a, a very, like, dark spot in the history of the Metallic Dragons. And has led to a lot of internal strife with them and even in the times of like the the clovian republic would um would definitely have been there as it would have been um relatively recent um yeah the now there are also like some other things there like in the records it states that um the people in Trajana Major say that the dragons began eating their livestock, and that's why they were driven out. And the dragons claim that the people began sacrificing, like, dragonborn kobolds and others uh, to their false gods. And uh, the tensions boiled over um, and basically led to an attack on the, the dragon city of Mistral. Uh, the metallic dragons, of course, butchered the armies that attacked them, leaving thousands dead before the humans retreated. Uh, but it was enough bloodshed where they just kind of left. Now, the, the record books obviously say, like, the metallic dragons, like, 
showed incredible brutality against the people who attacked them. They burned, pillaged, and just like destroyed the land, and the truth is probably somewhere in between, but, you know, unknown. So the, the metallics do have lots of enemies. out of ideas. What about any of you? Uh. <sighs> yeah, I... Can I? I don't know. Can I research blood, like, since we're, we were on that from the symbol? Sure. Uh, what do you want to know about blood? Um, like... It's significance in, like, how it can be changed, like, what changes about it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um... Obviously, like, different species have different blood. Um, blood is thought to also potentially transmit memories. It's long thought that the blood of an individual and a person is what contains the latent properties of a Torvian. As, like, the bloodlines are meticulously tracked for Torvian wielders on the Rings of Marapis for that reason. Um, and two powerful bloodlines can come together to create a much more powerful Torvian uh, in general. Um, blood can come into factor if you are something like a sorcerer who has these natural abilities. Blood and uh, the ties therein you know, can tie a lot uh, to like what a, a person is. Um, and the changing of that know can kind of like rewrite you know the past so like poor bloodlines can technically grow if they change their blood via you know magic or the acquisition of a torvian or just something as you know cultural as marrying into a different family or rising up in social status Question, am I hungry? No. It's been a couple days. Or at least a day. Right? Yeah, I'm... Have you been eating during this time? Because I'm oh. assuming you've had food. Okay, yeah, fair. Never I mind. would assume we have rations on us. Yeah, if you... Yeah, yeah, been... yeah, never mind, never mind. If I'm you haven't been eating, then you would be hungry. <laughs> okay. That, that is all. <laughs> I have been eating. Maybe we should take a rest, though. I think we're... I don't know for sure, but... I think we are fine in here. It... Leaving is a different story, but... We only have so much food. Yeah. Not like reading is super hard work. I'm probably gonna keep at it. You are also significantly less injured than there on an eye right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you know, you know, rest up. I'll keep reading. Uh huh. Um, I guess just wake us if you need anything or if you find anything. We'll do. And I'm just, I'm just napping on the floor somewhere. Okay. You, uh, like, go and, like, start napping on the floor. Oh, actually, can I, I just saw your message. Can I 
figure that out first before I lay down. Sure. Um, make a perception check. Uh, oh. Uh, stress is still at three, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's a zero. Stress climbs to four. As you can't figure out what's going on, it's omnidirectional, but yet so quiet that if you try and focus on it, it's, it's like it's not there. Um, Actually, I'm, I'm going to look around some first. And Cupid is slowly started to draw Dagape. I heard a knock at the door. You... Oh, that, that's not what I heard. What did you hear? Coming. Oh, if the banker could in get in here, he would have done it long ago, right? Not necessarily. Well, he needs erudition to get in, in theory. That was why he was chasing us. Um, I... Grim, you don't hear anything weird, do you? I don't think so. No, you don't hear anything, Grim. Can I go to the third floor and grab, um... One of the weapons from the people up there? Sure. It's eight feet long, right? Mm hmm I'd probably, like, break off one of the ends of the glaive. Okay. Just to make it more spear-like. Gotcha. Uh, it is a minus one weapon and incredibly old, but it, it can serve a function. Minus one. It's been in here for a while, not being kept up, just letting... That shit sucks. <laughs> it's not great. These are not well-kept weapons. Now, a regular, like, you know, poorly made weapon would probably be completely useless. These were actually very nice weapons at one point. Oh, idea. What? Can I research your edition and find what's it, what it's made out of? Uh, sure. As you because it has not rusted with me, correct? Uh, correct. As you kind of like go and begin to look up uh, your edition, and it's kind of like dull, kind of bluish colored blade. Um, it seems to like after kind of research, uh, it's made of like a uh, steel mixed with colloidal silver, which kind of gives a more kind of bluish tint to the blade. Um, it is magical, and you gather that's probably the magic of the weapon that prevents any rusting. Darn. Not what I hope. Since I'm using it as a spear and it's not really like a full weapon anymore, would it be a D6? Uh, or a D8? It would still be... Um, if you're using it as a spear, then it would be a D6, yeah. Okay. Just for simplicity's sake. Mm -hmm. I'd like to kind of do just like... Ooh. What was that? Like... Okay. <laughs> that doesn't suck at all. Um, my perception check, that was just kind of like listening to pinpoint, right? Yeah, generally. Okay, I'm gonna... I, I think Cupid's gonna 
pace around a bit, just kind of looking around to make sure there's no so source that they couldn't see before, and then I think they are still because they're still very beat to shit. They are still gonna try to rest, just kind of probably a, a bit of a fitful one eye open kind of sleep, uh, but hanging near Grim probably. Okay, um, Grim is walking off at this point. Oh, uh, Grim, what you up to? Uh, I just wandered. All right. I'm assuming the armor they had on is in a similar state. Yeah. A worse state than the weapons are in. They are... Okay. Uh, you don't think the armor is necessarily usable. Cool. Um... I'm still going to try to take at least like a short rest. Just kind of somewhere where I have like a, a good view of uh, the rest of the floor. Can I follow Grim? Grim, are you trying to lose him as he's going to try and follow you? No. Okay. Where are you headed, Grim? I'm going to I'm going to peek at the front door, look very disappointed and then walk back to where everyone else is. Okay. Then are you guys trying to take a short or long rest? I would like to gun for at least a short, but a long one if everyone is comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, I don't really need a rest. Can I? You need spell slots. I will take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely little tidbit of information. Uh, if we're all doing long rests, um, do you guys want to set up watches? Just in case. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Gotcha. Um, so, eight hours for the rest then? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. As all of you take your watches in turn, um, I'm guessing first, like, they're on, then uh, probably Grim, and then kind of wrapping it up with Cupid as, um, you know, nothing really of note, you know, happens through the rest as you just kind of all take some time, you know, chilling, recovering. Sorry, were you gonna say something, Cooper? No, I'm I'm just jolting, like okay. awake if I'm sleeping. Gotcha. Fair enough. Do you go back to sleep? I try to. Okay. You can. Then all of you can take a long rest. Yay. Out of curiosity, do I still hear the? Humming I heard when I wake up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great. Does it... I, I assume probably not based on my prior perception roll, but can I tell if it seems like it is actually her or someone else fucking with me? Who knows? Okay, that's what I figured. Which is worse, really? Well, I think worse would be her. Again, who knows? Mm -hmm. Does this library have any... Probably not. But does it have any, like, samples of, um... Like, rare minerals? It or does metals? not. It is not a conservatory, unfortunately. Okay. I, I figured that that probably wouldn't go anywhere, but I, I had to ask. Mm hmm Um, we, we did not get to actually searching Rummel yet, did we? 
Uh, Brumel? No. Brumel? Yeah. In that case, may I um, look up anything about it that I can't? Sure. Um, make an investigation check for me. Cool. Um, is my stress down to zero now? Your stress has not changed. My stress is not... Oh, okay. Uh, investigation, you said, right? Correct. Uh, I don't suppose I would get Hunter's Bane for it? You would. Oh, cool, okay. Uh, not bad for what I can do. Fifteen? Fifteen. Yeah, not bad. As you begin to, uh, look around. So... You know how, like, in the modern world, you know, it's like you, like, sometimes people will say, oh, yeah, like, Czechoslovakia, but, like, Czechoslovakia broke up a long time ago, and it's now the Czech Republic, and, you know, Bulgaria, uh, Slovakia, like, uh, many other things, like, since then. It's like an old-time name that obviously dates a person. Brumel is the same way. Um, as that dimension has not been called Brumal in many thousands of years um, by this point, um, the current position of negative 22 on the cosmic stack is occupied by the Malefic Warrens. Oh, that's worse. A who? Ah, uh, the Malefic Warrens. Oh, sh I, I wouldn't know about the Malefic Warrens, you though, would. would I? You'd absolutely know about the Malefic Warrens. Oh, great. Great. Yay. I get the full existential dread. The who? It's... It's in another dimension that is sort of... It... It hungers, and it eats other dimensions in its wake. It's not a very nice dimension. We may be able to... I, I would know that it breaks into our dimension sometimes, right? That it has been trying to get a hold? Uh, at this point, you would have known that it has a hold over in uh, Western Bospora. Because the nation of Malachus is a thing now. The good and bad news is that we can get to it. Um, it has a hold here um, in Western Bospora, in Malachis specifically. How bad is that? It is not somewhere I would ever want to go. It... Being stuck between that and the banker is... I... The banker might be worse, but it is close. Shut the fuck up. So anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, Are God. you all right, Grim? Oh, I'm fine. You're the one who seems to be be having issues. What? What? <laughs> Shut up.
I'm I'm just I'm just in in my own head about you know life and all that I guess. You seemed like you were very much not fine. Fine. Look, do I look like the type of guy who's not fine? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, well, you're wrong. But I respect your opinion. You don't really seem like it. You, you did tell me to shut up. I wasn't talking to you. I... Okay, then who were you talking to? Uh, presumably the banker. You... You're Does hearing him? Hear no, I... I heard something, but it was not... It was different. What? What did you hear? You know... Things? What were what, the what, things what saying? Matters? Just to like come outside. Don't I won't do it, obviously. Okay. But you know, I'm, he's just trying to get in our head. You know. Um. At this point, Theron's like looking around frantically. Okay. I also would. I, I don't suppose I can pinpoint what I heard. Can I? You can't, really. Okay. Well, whatever you're looking for, I'll help you look. I, I don't know about Theron, but I don't want to find what I'm looking for. Oh. Well... It might, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the banker fucking with me too, but I, I don't know why she'd be here. Why, who would be here? Nah, it's not my place I, to ask, I'm sorry. No, you're fine, it, it's my fiancé, ex-fiancé. But she is very, very dead. That's not the bad part. But it's concerning that she is dead and here. We all hear dead people. I'm presuming that we're all hearing dead people. Yeah. Hey. They're on. You hear a dead man? No at, one, I, I don't know. At this point, he's sort of looking at you a little warily. If you're hearing that, are, are you hearing Gary? Yeah, a little. Okay, so at least two of the three of us are hearing dead people. I'm hearing dead people too. Okay. He's just trying to drive us mad. We know that they're dead. We know it's the banker. I... There was... Did... For my ex-fiance, there was no body, was there? I, I imagine it would have been given the nature of death, like, it would have been burnt? Mm-hmm. Correct. I... I don't know how he would know about death, though. She... Her body was burned. Like, there's nothing for him to use. Well, he does own our soul. 
presumably that comes with some kind of information. I... Actually, Colin, can I, can I tell if that logic tracks? Make an insight check. Okay. Um, that's not going to be pretty. Uh, 13. 13? Oh, maybe? It doesn't sound like it could be crazy, but again, who knows? I really hope you're right, Grim. I hope that's all it is. Well, whatever the alternative is, is it worth thinking about? Let's keep researching anything and everything about whatever we can think of. Just random stuff at this point. Well, I think if... If we can... Get... If we can get to the place I mentioned before, which we probably should not speak of by name anymore if we can get there then I think we would have a chance at getting what we're looking for it, if we can find a way out well I'm sure that there's plenty of information about teleportation here he's knocking again Not worth thinking about. Just try to ignore it. Right. Well, I. May... Maybe we could find a teleportation circle or door way to make one, but. Do. Out of character, you still need to, like, know some kind of teleport spell in order to use a teleportation circle, right? Yeah, you have to be a strong enough mage or be able to cast a spell of a high enough level to use it. There... We have not seen any like, scrolls or any kinds of magical items, have we? Aside from the weapons people brought in, it has all been books in here? Yeah, this is a library. It's not a conservatory. I figured we could look for information on teleporting, although I don't think any of us are adept enough at magic to pull it off. Well, we have plenty of time to practice, right? Presumably. Hopefully. Can I look something up? Sure. Um, about... I want to find information about, um... Like, souls, uh, the... I guess, possession of a soul, like... Like, the banker has over us. Like, he bought our souls from death, basically. Mm -hmm. If there's any way to sever that connection. Um, looking for, like, information here, there, this has only been theorized as death, as an entity people have reported have been close to death, is very focused on his tithe of souls. Death does not like to give up souls for any reason. Um, but the soul has to go somewhere. So there's not really a lot of information 
there about, you know, like, what, what would happen if death just gave up your soul? Like, it is just never really been, like, contemplated. Okay. Can I look up the Malefic Warrens and if there is a way to draw it to us? Um, looking like at it, uh, the Malefic Warrens uh, from these kind of old records has always thought to require a vessel to pull it through dimensions, and it just kind of pops up places where the kind of borders between dimensions in the cosmic stack are thin. But even then, it never truly manifests in full. Right. this point as the days continue to pass um at this point you are starting to run out of food as you have been inside this library for the past like almost seven days at this point sir are you cut out a little for me? Um, you said we're running out of, I assume, food followed that? Food, yeah. You've been in here for about the past seven days. Okay. Maybe, maybe he's not out there right now. Maybe he's just trying to keep us pinned in until we starve to death. Frankly, I've already accepted that I'm a dead man. I'd rather die uh, in here than letting him in. So either we find a way out, I hear the knocking now, too. Um... Alright, I... I agree with you. Um... I, I guess... It, it seems like it will not really bear fruit, but I will try to look into teleportation if there is any method of getting out of the library without opening that door. Okay. Um, then, as you kind of begin to kind of look, I mean, there are like methods of teleportation, um, kind of like treatises about kind of trying to learn spells and things like that, but they're way beyond you. It's like if you tried to set down like a, a preschooler it's like, all right, here, here's a calculus textbook, you know, take the limit of this. It's like, you, you skipped a few steps there. Like, if you had infinite, like, food and water and time, then you could stay in here for as long as you needed to learn everything about how to cast this teleportation spell. I don't suppose there's a way to, if I can find a way to teach myself something like a create food and water spell. Uh, even then, um, like not really, like you don't have like the time. And I believe, uh, again, like you're not even like a spell caster, really. There. I try. Um, 
Watcher spell. Let's see. For you, um, I make an Arcana check, I suppose. Okay, I I, I am a, a range ranger man. Six. Uh, nope. As you're, I mean, again, like, I believe for even, like, create food and water, there are, like, material components to that. Um, I'm not even sure if a ranger necessarily gets that spell base, but, like, as you're trying to, like, go through and uh, do this, you just... There, there's not the right books. As, again, you're more of like a primordial magic user. Your magic comes from the changing of things and your connection to the wilds, which you don't have a lot down here in this underground library. Um, and even then, uh, for you, Cupid, as you were looking... No matter what, like in, if you're going to teleport, this interior sanctum is protected. To get out of it, you'd have to open the door no matter what. Okay. Could we petition a high god? I doubt they'd even listen. You can give it a shot, but death has already forsaken us. I don't think anyone else will be much more interested. I already tried to petition someone else before before it even got this dire, and it was a no. So I don't know my, what use it would be. But I... He's trying to make bargains now. He's telling us that, or me at least, that if we give up the dagger, we can live, so... It might be a nice final fuck you to just die in here. I'm not letting him in. I thought I was dead quite a while ago at this point. I think we're gonna end up being just another skeleton, you know? Well, skeletons that permanently denied the banker what he wants, at least. If he can't get the dagger, he can't get in. Good enough for me, I guess. I'll work on whatever I can until potentially I die. Okay. I will do everything I can to try and find a way out, and if I can't, I would rather die. So. Gotcha. Theron, are you committed to staying in here? I think... At a point when, like, dehydration or starvation starts to hit, he'd ask one of the others to kill him. Because he doesn't want to go out like that. But yes, he is committed to staying. Alright. Would Grim or Cupid honor that request at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, um, Grim, as you begin looking through, um, and through, like, these ways in and out, the 
the place you're in is a sanctum. Like, it is, for all you can tell with your research, completely safe inside. And judging by everything, you know, creatures can't get in without the key. And you got the key, the lone key to your knowledge, inside of this great library with you. As you're kind of like holding it close, just kind of um, having it hidden away somewhere. Um, if you have any plans for getting out, they all kind of involve at, at the very least cracking open the door or breaking the protective seals on the library, which kind of do the exact same thing uh, in the end. And from what you've indicated, I believe that you do not want to do either of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Cupid, are you sticking to your guns as they were? Yep. All right. Then... Um, if I think I'm going to die soon, I do want to do one thing. Okay. Um, the, the little piece of information about where the uh, scroll of Marapis is. Yeah. I want to eat it. All right. I don't want anyone else to have that info. Even if the guy gets in here, he will never know. Gotcha. Very nice. In that case, as you kind of eat that information, um... All of you kind of slowly start to fade with time as well as your aether souls, so it takes a while as, you know, kind of weeks start to pass. As, you know, even with dehydration, the body of an aether soul can last a very long time, especially in here in, like, perfect conditions with rationing and things of that nature. But as, again, that time continues to press forward, um, they're on. As you have elected to be the first to go, what are your last moments like? I think he would... I'm assuming there's, like, paper and potentially ink somewhere mm -hmm. you could find. I think he would write a letter and, like, seal it just to have on him with detailing who he was and his crimes, basically. Okay. And what are those crimes? Obsessed with success and needing to complete his mission for fear of failing. Theron murdered his uh, squad mates in cold blood when they refused to continue a frankly hopeless mission. Mm -hmm. Then, as that happens, Cupid or Grim? Which one of you is granting Theron's final wish? I'm willing. Okay. And he'd request slashing the throat. Oh, buddy. <laughs> well, I do have a, a short sword on me. Alright. Then of sound, mind, and body to prevent the alternative. You kill Theron to prevent the Banker of Bones from getting to him while he is alive. Not long after, though, Cupid, your constitution scores 12. And Grimm's constitution score is 14. So you feel yourself fading before him. When I start to feel myself fading, I... 
would I be able to kind of bypass like my crimson right and like shoot myself actually fatally? If you would like, yes. Do you attempt to leave anything behind? I don't think I'll leave anything behind. But I, I will say to Grim, um, for what it's worth, um, for all this shit that happens, it At least it was you two. I don't know what I'd have done if I was stuck with other people. I don't know what we would have done either. Probably wouldn't have made this far, at least. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah. And then I will do it. Crap. And you're the last one, Grim. And even now you feel yourself fading as well. What are your last moments like? I want to make a fake, fake map to, uh, what's it called? To the scroll of Marapis. Okay. And, uh, um, I'm just putting it in the middle of the ocean. Where I, whoever finds this can go look for it there. Okay. And then I'll, I'll... Right next to the big index, I'll etch my name in there and be like, Grim was here. Awesome. And then I'll, I'll grab the gun and... It seems like the fastest way out. Fair enough. And what you wouldn't see is the banker of bones on the other side of the door screaming, thrashing, slobbering at the mouth as you win an all-powerful entity who has tried to take you while well, you refuse. And I'd like all of you to roll a d20 for me. <laughs> it's a 19 for me. Not one. 14 for me. Okay. Then, at this point, as this all is happening, um, it's actually you, Veron, as darkness finds you. A familiar face is actually there waiting for you. As the world seems to twist upside down, and you see that the right hand of death is there. And they give you a very sad smile. I'm sorry. I could only get one. It was you. Are you ready to I, go? I don't deserve this. Can you get one of the others? Kind of places a sad hand on your shoulder. No. I can't. I'm pretty beat up from fighting off the banker already. It wasn't easy to be here to try this. I knew I could only get one. It's better than the alternative. 
and maybe it shouldn't have been you. But du judge and executioner is not the job of death. I collect the tithe. And you're on the list. I also, um, I need a favor. Someone very close to me needs a favor. Since you're dead, if I can, um, I'll just get right to it. Can you tell me where the scroll of Marapas is? I know someone who's looking for it. And she needs it real bad. Who? Her name's the Maiden. And through all this, she might be the one person that can change things for the better. We don't have an exact location. Actually, can I give an insight check? Sure. Let's see if he's lying at all. You would know he's not lying. Okay. Um, its last loan location was Brummel. Layer negative 22. The Malefic Warrens. Tower of Whispers. Hmm. It's a tough ask. It's alright, though. I know a guy that can probably do it. And it is here we cut to black. And... Thank you all for playing Things We Lost. The things that we ended up losing... Were you guys? So, uh -huh. when you you started uh, today with being like, oh well, one person always survives a horror movie. I assumed that the one, I assumed that that was a hint, and one person who had the least points of doom would make it out. Mm -hmm. So I, I was trying to keep mine below everyone else's. Mm. Yeah, doom was. Well, I'll, I can reveal it now. Doom was a, a rating of how, like, difficult things were for the banker. Like, when you reached maximum Doom, survival became next to impossible. Like, the D, like the DC thresholds climbed really, really high. And, like, if things were in the balance, like, there were less and less opportunities for rolls as, like, the surrounding darkness kind of collapsed in around you.